Hello everyone, Adam here, and it's been a while since I've done one of these videos. It's going to be a reaction video to Angry Joe's review for Resident Evil 8 Village. Now, I loved Resident Evil Village, it was incredibly exciting, and I'm a huge fan of Angry Joe. I've been subscribed to him for years now, and I want to see how he reviews this game because I've been interested. I've been putting it off for a couple of uh, for a week because it's been quite busy for me, but let's do it and we'll watch together and discuss. Hey guys, thank y'all so much for supporting uh, the Angry Oh, the kitty cat. Uh, the review is finally complete. Uh, if you want to see all 14 hours of the playthrough, go subscribe to our second channel, Angry Joe Show Live. Oh man, what are you doing, man? And, uh, and then also I want to thank our sponsors, G Fuel, uh, who actually have a Lady D flavor. So if you want to taste a Lady D, pre-order now. I got you 30% off with our code down below, Angry Joe. I hope you enjoy. It is pre-order. It's not out until July, but at least you can get in your order now and ship right when it's done. Thank you to G Fuel. Thank you to you guys for supporting the show and being so patient. Enjoy. Check it out. Oh, there's also a special parody we did just for G Fuel at the end, so stay tuned to the very, very end. All right, guys? Okay, okay we'll stay tuned to, to the very end. Oh, my God. Resident Evil 8, yes! I've been waiting four years for this game. I can't wait to see where they take this series. It's going to be so awesome. Blue Umbrella? What is up with that? Oh, and... The Lady D, woo, villainess. Oh, I can't, I gotta call her right now. We're gonna have some great opening skits in our parody. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Ugh, all right. Wow. After this Damn. morning and the really weird stuff yesterday, uh, your yes. time is up. My time is, you're already here? Yeah. But, but no, what is this? This is your invoice. No, you, what do you mean? Private opening skit? What, gas and travel? Two hour lingerie shoot? No. Could they even have the nipples on the Shouldn't boobs? That's actually that very. Wow! What, what is they went above and be beyond. Like? It's expensive, is what it but is. Sit and stomp. Sit and stomp. Sit and stomp. It's on here three times. It's a mistake. Talk to the other guy. What? Dry cleaning? Definitely. Hazard pay. Oh my god! It was sticky. No! You, please don't do this! Don't do this! I gotta go. Uh, Your no. Up. no, no, you have to stay! You're, you're everything. You're in all the marketing, the trailers, the cardboard cutouts, the every. We, we, if we lose you, then we have no named villains. You have to stay, please. No, not my problem. Here, that's for you. End of the week. I, I expect payment. Girls, let's go. Lady T, please. No, Lady T, I. We need uh, uh, Mount. You, it, <laughs> Joe. Damn. OJ. I mean, you use that Patreon OJ! money. Get in here right now. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. It's not what it looks. Oh my God. Oof, I'm sore, careful. Joe. What's that? Oh. Private opening skit? You called her here before we even had a chance to do anything? I was testing the talent out. Human being bag, what is that? Uh, Sit and stomp man. three times? What is the well, human bean bag? Time, but then it was too good, I couldn't pass it up. Joe, do you see the cost on this? You blew our entire budget! That's not the only thing I blew. Gross! Oh, uh, yeah, gross. Did you see her? Yeah. Yeah. I like the fact he just keeps the same graphic for these angry reviews. It does have a level of nostalgia to it. So clearly I love Resident Evil. And Resident Evil 8 is good. It's just not entirely what I expected from the sequel. Do I like it? Yes. Do I think you should go out and buy it if you haven't already? Yes. If only for that baby part. Oh my God. Ugh. That is one of the creepiest things I have ever experienced in recent memory. Oh I, yeah, this screwed me up too. I saw that and I was like, nope. And I ran the what opposite the way. Fuck is that? Shoot it. Fucking shoot it. You don't have weapons. Nope. What the fuck? No, no, no. Laughing is very bad. Can you close the door? Laughing and giggling. I. This is fucking... Mm. 
What the fuck are you hiding for, bro? Yeah, that thing is Granted, I your height. Them, then it's not as scary as I, I was hoping for, you know, outside of that one part. Unfortunately. Get go! Open the fucking door! <laughs> Oh shit! No. <laughs> this, just, this game just went up. Yeah, that I was, was like, a, "Is that, that gonna get you, fucking sequel. run?" That was a great fucking. And if it gets sequel, you, man. eats you. In fact, I think it was done on purpose that it's not quite as scary. The producer is actually quoted as saying that. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember this. this. Evil 7 was too I scary, was so scared by this statement. It down for this one. Who in the Quaker fuck thought that Resident Evil 7 was so scary that they needed to tone it down? Resident Evil producer said in his latest uh, interview included in a newsletter, Candace said Village's development team didn't want to frighten off players after some feedback suggested the game's predecessor was too scary. No! Oh, no, it wasn't. We wanted scary. I mean, it was exactly scary, but it was a good for. type of scary. But at the same time, it is always our goal to create something that anybody can feel comfortable. No, yeah, I remember reading no. that. It, it's just bringing so back uh, PTSD on memories. Curve relative to Resident Evil 7, so that players aren't in constant fear. God dang it, that's not. No, why are we trying to make Resident Evil for all ages? Not even my grandma would think it's that scary. They're probably just trying to shoo them away. Oh, take this, you little baker, bitch. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Grandma, how you liking Resident Evil 7? Huh? C can I play now? No, no. This game's too scary. Too scary for you. What? If they make a, if they make another one, you can play that one if it's less scary. This is, this, it's too scary for you. Oh, come too on. scary for me, too. Oh, you want some more? You can get to Grandma style, see whose hip gets broken. Wait, what's grandma style? Look, like grandma style Capcom pizza? Has done a great job of bringing players back to the franchise with its horror roots while revitalizing it with that new story in Resident Evil 7 and revamping their stuff at the heydays in Resident Evil 2 Remake. These were marked improvements over the direction that most of us disliked that the franchise was going in with Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil Giraffe Man, you know what I mean? That actually sure, wasn't so there bad. Was a tiny misstep with Resident Evil I 3 played remake, it. It's pretty good. Hollow, it's, it's just fun. not a good Resident Evil game because it's not scary. Sequel to the well-received game. Ethan, Mia, those bakers. Resident Evil 7 was this up close and personal story with that first person perspective change. There was tons of tension, horror, surprise, and action. All this, and there was even VR, which made the experience even better and way more immersive. Oh, shit! <laughs> I wish I could play it in VR. I, I don't have a VR headset, but it is amazing. Oh back up, back up. The game itself. The Except for the DLC with the cards when you uh, oh, go against the sun. Lucas, I believe his name is. Oh, oh my god, I hated that man. DLC. How do you speed through? <laughs> But everything oh about God, it was amazing. Fucking weird. No. So I obviously expected all that and more in the sequel. Now, I do like how they tried some different stuff. The levels are outside instead of stuck in one house. They obviously do go into a castle at some points, but they have some really cool layouts around this old town. Unfortunately, because of that, it loses a bit of the tension by setting good portions of the games outside. It loses a bit of the horror, aside from that one part, in favor of more action. And yes, over the top ridiculous action that makes you laugh and say, what the fuck am I playing? The tank boss? <laughs> huh? <laughs> You're playing Mech Assault now. A toned down version of Mech Assault. I sort of thought we were getting maybe a meeting of our old nostalgic characters with Resident Evil 7's new characters. Like Chris, he showed up at the end of 7 and he's in all the marketing and trailers in the game. But to be perfectly honest, it's really just Ethan going through the same thing he did in 7 with a different family. You mean you'll screw around with him in private? I mean, he's not wrong. What the fuck is going on? And Ethan does feel like uh, he's surprised. Uh, I guess he hasn't gotten used to this, which makes sense, I guess. Uh, never mind. I mean, you're still dealing with more horrifying people. Why the fuck is this happening again? Shit.
only with a tiny bit more context explaining everything and, and how it ties into the greater world of biohazard. It's a conclusion of our no-faced protagonist Ethan. Which I did. I did an end and explain. There'll be a card on the right hand side again. of the screen. And poor Ethan, this guy has taken so much abuse by now. For Christ's sake, stop chopping off his hands and fingers. <laughs> ah, what? <laughs> My right hand, bitch. You, the last game, my left hand. Now my right hand. That's my good hand. And I got no I mean that he it was because he was infected with the mold. I'm trying not to be uh, spoiler heavy when I talk about it, but. It was because he was infected with the mold. A lot of people made fun of that scene, but it was because he was infected that the hand came back on. But the game raises more questions than it answers, ultimately. And I guess I sort of expected a bit more. It felt a little frustrating after waiting three, four years. We're holding out and get to the damn point. So what it is, is Resident Evil 8 is basically, uh, essentially a boss gauntlet of five, maybe six major bosses with often nothing interesting in between. It's up and down, it's mixed. And there's no VR this time. Why, Capcom, why? This is straight unforgivable. VR added so much to this first game, to the, and, and we all have it because we liked it. What is it, production delay? Maybe they didn't have laziness? enough time. I don't understand why you take away that added dimension that took that first game from an eight to a nine. Yet it's not here. Here we have one boss after another. Granted, each boss has her own delightful uniqueness about them. Oh, shit. Yeah, Capcom knows how to make really good boss oh, fights for all their games. Alright, go stab it! But first, let's talk about it. Z no, werewolves! Zombies? Where zombies? When you arrive in this castle town, you first deal with zombie werewolves as you work your way up. Hey! Back up! Is that a warning shot? Ah! Fucking shoot it! Well, I thought I wanted to see what would happen. Oh, fuck! Yup! Yeah. They are essentially headshot resistant brutes, but aside from growling and howling, they unfortunately aren't that much fun to fight. I mean... Give it take. I did like shooting them. I appreciate the effort to try something new though. Eventually you'll get to the castle and you'll be confronted with the oh so sexy Lady D and her creepy daughters. I also have explanations oh, for them. That bitch is crazy, right? I didn't want to do this. <laughs> Keep shooting. I'm not into you, I'm into your mama. <laughs> it's what the internet and other Joe have been going gaga for the past year on social media. Oh! Yeah, this scene is awesome. What the hell do uh, uh, you ungrateful, selfish wretch? You come into my house. Our house. You lay your <laughs> man hands on my daughter. Yo, daughter. Now you even try to steal my property. Our property. Uh, <laughs> oh, what the? Through the floor. Mm, I think little by little I'm wearing yeah, her down. It's <laughs> she wants me to be alive. It's cool. It's a great section. It feels very much like Resident Evil 7's Baker home, only more regal, royal. Lady D even chases you around like the classic Mr. X, only with big boobs. Oh no, I'm down here with all this wine and a nice lit candle. What am I gonna do? Time to seduce her. 
and the barrels of wine that are filled with dead bodies. We have fucking wine and candles and flowers. Again, those wine barrels are filled with uh, dead bodies of (laughs) mutilated men. You don't want her to catch you, but you kind of sort of do. I don't know, I don't want her to catch me. She has those long nails that slice. Oh no! Please do not grab me! Especially around my no-no areas! It is very sensitive! Oh, I tripped! What is this? A nice bottle? Would you care to share? Oh, no, I guess we're gonna have to fight. Oh, no, no. Oh, my She's God. How much did... Powerful. Oh. oh, my God. Okay, that's oh, cringy. Oh, no. Oh, oh, my God. Americans are the worst. Lady D, come back. You can't run away from my love. After you murder her daughters, though, I'm pretty sure it ruins whatever y'all would have had going. Sorry, guys and gals. No! We could have been something, you crazy bitch! (laughs) I love you! No, not the dagger. Took my heart. But then you get the big boss battle with her, and boom, it's done. It's over and done. And I know it's kind of not fair since the internet built her up in that way too much, but it does feel a bit deflating after she's gone. She's the first boss you defeat. Well, damn. I mean, they didn't know she was going to be that popular. Now won't see my lady anymore. And that's how it worked for Resident Evil 7. Well, for the most part, uh, Jack kept coming back. But when you killed his wife, she was gone permanently. That's kind of how it worked. You kill a lord and then move on. It is followed up by one of the scariest sections in the game, hands down. This weird, creepy doll lady is next. This baby section. As you and Mia have had a kid in the meantime in the games. And this boss loves to play with your mind. It is a fantastic section that really makes... I have an explanation for her as well. Including the cut content of when she was originally supposed to be a doctor. I'll put it in uh, cards above if I can. But all of it's linked below. Yeah. To a death. This game just went up. Yeah, that I was, was like, some, is that, that gonna that get you fucking run? <laughs> that was a great fucking sequence, man. I ain't never seen anything like that before. And I watched a lot of horror movies. That shit was fucking boss, dude. Oh my god, that was fucking traumatizing. Unfortunately, it never reaches these heights again. Instead, it actually takes a hard right turn into a more over-the-top action. We get this gross fish dude with mommy issues that you fight, and Heisenberg. No, not Breaking Bad and Walter. It's more off-brand Nicolas Cage? Thing that they're You're using to make. Uh, I mean, I always thought of him as a bloodborne hunter. We just met a while back, not that it really matters. It what? does sound like a Nicolas Cage, way, like an off brand Nicolas Cage. You've got fight. I'll give you that, Ethan. I'll give yeah, you that, good. I mean, they're not wrong. He does sound like off-brand Nicolas Cage. Now I can't unsee it. Hey. Or unhear it. The dollar store version, the wish Mall. list. God damn it. And, I'll, and you'll figure the rest out. It was set to Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was set to Cage. Nice. It'll be far. It'll be far. <laughs> it's totally fucking... Ni- Somebody look up who the fuck this the is. You've also got a werewolf leader with a hammer and the final boss, Mother Miranda, that leads the whole thing. Look, I love bosses, especially Capcom ones. Fucking unload everything you have. Oh, Hide. No, frame drop. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, I can't. No. Don't change it. The game said you but die too much. The battle themselves feel a bit short. 
They, they lack interesting mechanics and sometimes suffer from that too tight of an area to properly fight problem that we've seen from them before. It's it's the more frustrating He's Resident right. Evil 3 make battle with the, that wrestling creature. Lady, you would have been dead. <laughs> nemesis? Mutated nemesis? Rather than the tension of Resident Evil 2's Mr. How could you not remember Nemesis? Unless he was just doing a joke there. Yeah, Mr. X was no joke. Just follows you around and you hear those footsteps four, everywhere. These boss battles together and then add in the ridiculous Chris Redfield level where the game turns into fucking Call of Duty. It rightfully gave me pause. Yeah. I, I mean, I can understand why you'd be frustrated with this part, but you have to remember Chris is a veteran. He's been dealing with this stuff for years. Like this oh, stuff wouldn't uh, make him flinch. In fact, he would come in fully prepared to do this stuff. So this section makes sense. Chris coming in with this uh, amount of arsenal to deal with BOWs makes 100% sense considering his history. But I can get why you'd be upset with that. I mean, it's hard for you to make veteran characters like Chris, Leon, Claire be afraid of these things considering how much they've dealt with it. Uh, yeah. Let me uh, pause and like the reason I think that that section works is because uh, Leon, Chris, Claire, a lot of the veteran cast have been dealing with this stuff for so long that it fits the lore. Same thing with Ethan. Ethan has been training himself ever since the events of Resident Evil 7. You can see the books from Kendo that he's been studying. So it makes sense why he's much more nimble and able to move around and he's much more proficient with weapons and combat. But with Chris... He's a veteran when it comes to BOWs. Granted, again, Joe does have a point because in Resident Evil 7, the Not A Hero DLC, they did combine it well. They combined Chris's elite uh, training along with Resident Evil 7's tense mechanics. So I can get where he's coming from here. I don't know why Capcom is now kind of flirting with the idea of going back there in the last few levels. We don't need Chris showing up with a thousand high-powered guns and literally nuking the entire map. That's not horror. Sorry, not sorry I shot your wife, Ethan. I got no time to explain. I'm liking this. It's pure cheese. Granted, cheese has always been a part of the franchise, and it should be there. I'm just worried about them going too far with it as they have in the past. You know, they claim Ethan's story is now concluded, and they're passing the torch to his daughter. But if they don't start bringing in some of the classic characters they've been promising, I'm gonna get really bored and pissed off. The Winters family is cool, but let's focus on someone else for a while. Please, Chris, Leon, Claire, anyone, just... Oh, the story itself in Resident Evil. I mean, again, it, it, I would love that, but the problem is how do you make that horror with characters like that who've dealt with this stuff for years? Like in Revelations 2, even though Claire was unnerved by the monsters she was encountering, she was still very much ready for them to come. Same thing for Leon. Leon is literally one of the top agents when it comes to B.O.W.s. He was an advisor to the president. Heck, he was sent to a remote village to rescue the president's daughter single-handedly given his incredible amounts of training. So, I mean, Cap maybe Capcom can do that. So that's why Ethan really worked because he was just an ordinary guy. He never dealt with any of this. He barely knew how to shoot a gun. So it added to the tension that he was just this regular person trying to survive these horrible events. And then when we got to play as Chris and not a hero, it still had that tension, but not to the same degree because you were embodying someone who was, again, an elite soldier who's been dealing with this for years. So while I... I do agree with Joe that I would love to see more Resident Evil 7 type games. 
uh, it will be very hard to do that with the veteran cast considering how much they've gone through. That's like putting Master Chief in Halo Infinite into a novice role. Like, he doesn't know how to use a gun, he can't face aliens. Like, he's a veteran soldier, so you would assume that he would have a lot more effective strategies and muscle memory when it comes to combat. Same thing for this. So, um, it's, I don't know, maybe Capcom is up to the... They can probably do it because, again, they're the kings of survival horror. Evil 8. It was annoying at times. It's just that one trope where people won't say what they want to say. So there's tons of misunderstanding and they could just say it and everybody would understand. They said, holy fucking shit. Chris, what the hell? What the fuck? Uh, I know what he's going to say here. I felt the no. same way, but they actually do explain this part. She already at What? The, what? The fuck? If any of these characters would just fucking tell Ethan, it wouldn't ruin anything. No, instead, they have to frustratingly leave him in the dark, which leads to so much shit about everything, even though they know he's fucking important. Package secure, sir. Package? Take him away. I said get your hands off her! Ethan, no. What am I, a fucking dog? <laughs> no. Sit. Okay, uh, I I'm really I really tried to not talk about spoilers, but it, it, they do explain why this happened. The re so the big reveal. Uh, if you watch my end and explain video, which you should totally do, it's linked in the below. Go watch that video before continuing down uh, down here. But the reason that Mia didn't tell Ethan the truth was because she was not sure how he would react to it. Like, how would you react to that when you realize? Big spoiler, he's actually dead. Ethan is technically dead, and the only thing keeping him alive is the mold infection that Jack Baker infected him with. So, that's the only thing keeping him alive. It's a lot like Crisis 2 with Alcatraz. He's still technically alive, but the only thing keeping him alive is the suit he's wearing. Without it, he will die. Eventually, he does lose his mind and his memories are suppressed in the suit in Crisis 3, and Prophet takes over, but in this game... Mia basically reveals to Chris that Ethan is infected with the mold and he finds out that the only thing keeping him alive is the mold. So when Martha Miranda eventually kills him, the only thing keeping his body alive is the mold and he's on borrowed time. Similar how Mother Miranda expels a large quantity of her energy so Ethan is able to defeat her because he spent so much energy that the mold was keeping her on life support but any other damage would kill her and eventually Ethan wins but with Ethan he was on borrowed time by the end of the game and with this the reason Chris doesn't tell Ethan what he's doing is because he believes Ethan is infected with the Kadu parasite he doesn't know if he's infected or not and if he is infected he can be a huge risk because I mean Chris has no reason not to believe he's infected because Mother Miranda infiltrated herself into his home and as far as he can tell, he hasn't, even though he's been tracking her movement, he doesn't know fully if Ethan's infected or not. So that's why he doesn't tell him. Because if he is infected and he tells him, well, it could be dire. It could be literally him mutating right there on the spot and attacking all of them, putting the child at risk. And then on the other side, it would be, again, Mother Miranda controlling him. So that's why Eth uh, Chris doesn't tell him what's happening and basically went through it. But... In the end, when Chris is regretting Ethan's, uh, well, almost death, he's like, he should have told him, but the risk, it was risk versus reward, basically. Chris? Chris, Ethan, just explain to me what's saying. going yeah, on. just fucking say something. Don't start the game like this where you have this stupid fucking movie trope where you now gotta get my baby back. Now I gotta get my baby back. Don't look at the cat's on the... Uh, he's sleeping. So you've got this pattern. A boss... Some tropey dialogue, rinse and repeat each and each of the sections of the overall map as you unlock the linear path. You think maybe, oh cool, look at this map. I, I can maybe choose which box I want to do next, which one of these sister brother things. But no, after yeah, I about thought them, that too. No, the, the winged keys keep you in a set order. Thankfully, everything else about the Resident Evil franchise is intact. And it's good here. The inventory management, it's fantastic. They've got an awesome new shop, an upgrade center with this mysterious that, dude, Duke character who's hella fat and is always in the right place at the right time. 
I've been waiting for you, Mr. Winters. How do you know my name? What are you buying? What are you selling? Stranger, stranger, now that's a weapon. Ah, I would buy it at a high price. Yeah, and so do you. I mean, it's been confirmed the Duke and the Merchant are actually friends. You get some great weapons in the game that you can actually upgrade in different ways. Hell, you can even sell your freaking weapons that you're not using often. Making some really good decisions on, on how you want to deal with your I mean, enemy. you could always sell your weapons. But you gotta be careful to not short yourself. It's that kind of freedom that, that makes things more tense. I just wish that, you know, it would have been extended to the other parts of the game. I should probably get some well, ammo, but all this shit is to way overpriced. Yeah, it is. Nah. <laughs> you can go. All right, but then when you go over here. <laughs> no. A lovely weapon, sir. See? <laughs> he's even... He's, yeah, I, I, ah, I was yeah. demonstrating it for you, sir. I mean, he also cooks your meals for you. Making sure everything's <laughs> in Duke is a really good chef. It. They did some other great things. They got rid of the past series' you know, QTE sections. And they even made fun of uh, Resident Evil 5's ridiculous action where Chris punched a boulder. I mean, how does he even know about that? That's what I wondered. Hey, wait a minute! Whoa, whoa, wait! But then they turn around. Look here! That's me! That's my name! He used my clip! Oh, wow, I'm in an angry review! Look, there it is! There it is! That's my clip! My, my watermark! <laughs> Holy crap! Um... Where's my source? Did he, uh, did he link me in the description? What are you? Did he link me the- Uh... No, he, I didn't get a source. What the hell, man? I granted, it, uh, I mean, cool, I'm in the video, but I mean, I would've liked a source credit. But yeah, I can't- I'm actually- <laughs> Wow. I'm in an angry review, officially. There I am, AM Harbinger. It, it, it is a little strange that it's really fuzzy, but you can see it there, but yeah. Oh, I, I mean, you could have sourced my... Uh, you know what, it's not a big deal. And put you in a Smash TV tank and fight a trash tornado with rockets and 50 cal! What? That was awesome! It's... It's hopeless! It's hopeless! I never got that why Heisenberg just didn't reflect the bullets back to you. Like, he can bend and control metal. Oh, there's my clip. It's still there. the fuck would you even show up? Yes, let's shoot it with our bow and arrows. Oh, nice dodge. Miranda, these zeros are doing nothing to Chris. He's got fucking bullets. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he doesn't even have to go to the fat guy. He's got oh. Bob. <laughs> he blew up at Bob's head. <laughs> I mean, he's Chris Redfield. It's a in this scene, he is the boss. It's a fucking mess. And they're all trapped in here with him. Oh, this is a bad idea, Brenda. <laughs> at least it finally gives the origin for what the Resident Evils have all been about ever. If I understood it right, this sort of mold, the Kadao, the magma site thing. Magma face scene. To face with it. It's both kind of a side story and an explanation of the origin of all the major games. It's here in this game. But after ending and finishing in the credits roll, it just feels like the whole thing is over with this new set of characters that we went on a detour with, rather than the ones that we've known our whole lives, who didn't really get to participate. Okay, he does have a fair point there. That is 100% accurate. That man 
you come to this origin of what Umbrella stood for and how it Women. eventually developed until uh, Resident Evil 9, this. which I hear may just be a setup for a trilogy for the Winters family. The next one is going to wrap it all up. Only time will tell, but for now, the final verdict for Resident Evil 8 is a solid 7 out of 10. It would have been an 8 with a VR, one more point, just like the last one. Especially with that baby level. That is sorely missing here, VR. This one is basically a redo of Resident Evil 7 with less impact, more bosses, more lore, and answering some questions, but introducing far more than never get answered. Uh, Actually, I would think it's more like Resident Evil 6. <laughs> we got Philip burning around with tinfoil on his head. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> I mean, the pistol is pretty much worthless when you have the automatic <laughs> rifle. I never used a pistol. <laughs> For uh, Chris's section. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> After this game, I think we're just losing steam with the winters. And we need to shift focus. Let's continue the horror with the action that they so desperately want to put in with moderation. Uh, more memorable horror sections and less $1,850 collector's editions with a code for Chris who only shows up in one goddamn level in the most ridiculous way possible. Look, they did that for Devil May Cry. Sight of what makes Resident Evil great. You're doing good. Let's just continue the successful trend by bringing back some of our favorites. I don't think anyone cares about Rose or Agent 7 and Maybe there's a way to we can bring Lady D back. Pretty please. She got disintegrated. There's gotta be a way. Yeah, that would be magical. I know, right? Like the date we would have had. Yeah. Oh man, that would be so awesome if she could come back. All right, uh, it's five hundred dollars an hour, no touching, and oh, it's you guys. No, 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 no. Come back. Wait, five hundred dollars an hour? Yeah, but Dear God! Let's Where do I sign up for that job? When she comes in, you know, you're like, or whatever. Oh no, I have fallen. Please don't get me. Don't, and, don't ravage me. And then please don't ravage. Me. And you go directly into his boobs, and then maybe like, you know, you are like like this or something. Yeah. And he's like, Let's fight! Oh no! Oh! Oh no! He's too powerful! Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Americans are the worst. <laughs> Ooh, I'm liking this. <laughs> Why does he have a bow? I just noticed that. Finally made it. How did you get in here again? I climbed your castle. Ooh, Lady D, how did you get so amazing? Oh my god, you're, you're the worst. Look, if you want a taste of Lady D, yeah. you're gonna have to pay. Go to gfuel.com, use code ANGRYJOE, and get yourself some maiden's blood. That's the only way. Take oh, nemesis tea. Oh, I There's real do meat that. in every tub. Okay, no, I could tell totally No, 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 here, you take this. Okay. Now you go. Out the window. Bye -bye. Is he really Bye -bye. drinking wine? Bye. No. So I guess that's the end of the review. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's his Patreon. So I'll leave a like. I mean, it was he has a lot of really good points, uh, and I agree with a lot of things he stated about the game, about it leaning too heavily on action and not being uh, core Resident Evil. But I mean. Capcom was trying something new, and I've stated this on my streams before. It's because Ethan and uh, has become more seasoned as a fighter. That's why he's not as you know flimsy as in Resident Evil Seven. And same thing for Chris, where Chris is literally just an elite agent at this point. But I mean, they could do it in a way that's more like Resident Evil Seven. But 
I had major issue with the mobility system in that game because you always felt like you were moving at like a, a mile. Like you were running at such a very slow speed. It made you wonder if the characters weren't purposely like had arthritis or something. Like they just moved way, way too slow. Whereas the, everyone else, all the enemies and everyone would move much quicker. So that's a concern that they kind of addressed in this one. And... I do agree with a lot of things he stated, but I still think I gave the game a 9 out of 10 for the website I work for, and I stand by that score. I had a lot of fun, a blast playing the game. I replayed it like five times. I'm still going through Village of Shadows difficulty, but since Mass Effect Legendary Edition came out, I've been more focused on that because I'm a huge Mass Effect fan, and it kind of sucked me in, and I'm trying really hard to get back, pull away, but I can't. But I really, really wish he sourced my clip when he used it. Uh, where is it? Not there. Yeah, here. I, I really wish that uh, uh, Angry Joe did source my clip. Again, I'm not... He used it for free. Uh, this was uh, completely for original work and everything. I'm not saying anything negative about it he used it for his own original work to amplify his review completely fair use whatsoever i just wish he provided me with a source it's because you know smaller channels like myself the only way we get any re uh, notoriety is by larger channels giving us recognition i feel a little betrayed because again i respect angry joe and i love his content but yeah it, it kind of hurts a lot, but you know, it is what it is, uh, n no ill will, fair use, whatever, it is what it is, but yeah, because again, I'm literally reacting to his channel what, uh, right now, so um, yeah, it is what it is, it's okay, uh, but for everyone who joined me, thank you so much, I do agree with a lot of what Angry Joe said, he did another fantastic review, great production value, fantastic, funny, I mean... <laughs> The Lady D cos cosplay was really well done. Fun. <laughs> they even went far with the nipples. <laughs> that is just, uh, that is dedication to the bit. But great job. Loved it. Uh, so I'm going to end it here. For everyone who joined me, thank you so much. Uh, you can join my channel by uh, clicking the join button. I live stream every day. I'm currently live streaming Mass Effect Legendary Edition on Insane Walk on Insanity. And I will see you all next time. I know that this video is very old. Probably not going to gain a lot of anything. But I'm at the point where I just said, you know what? I want to do it. Let's do it. Till then, thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. And I will see you all next time. Stay awesome, everyone.